Workers' Compensation Statute is NJSA, New Jersey Statute Annotated, 34-15-1, all the way to the end. Um, there's a section, which is Section 8, um, which um, talks about the exclusive remedy, and that is that if you get hurt at work, the exclusive remedy is to um, only be able to uh, pursue a workers' comp case. You can't sue your employer. If there were a third party involved, but somehow they were tied to the employer, the argument in that case would be that it still falls under the exclusive provision of the workers' compensation statute, which is probably why you would have lost. So um, anyway, so that's that's sort of that. Uh, which stinks, but that's, you know, the only, the only case, the only case that gets over that hurdle, which is that one, is um, there was an individual who was working at a factory and what the happened was the company took the um, safety guard off of a machine and because that would allow the machine to move faster. And then when they did that and they found out that OSHA was going to come in, they put the safety guard back on the machine. OSHA leaves. They take the safety guard back off. And needless to say, within a very short period of time, uh, the petitioner gets injured uh, as a result of not having a safety guard on. So there, the court felt that there was an intent to harm. And as a result of that intent to harm, it got over the hurdle of being the exclusive remedy of workers' compensation. And so the answer is that if there is an attempt to try and go after the uh, employer uh, directly or some connection to the employer, um, you have to demonstrate or almost demonstrate basically that they meant to intentionally harm you, which just doesn't, it's, that's, it's just a tough, tough hurdle tougher. So, um, yeah, so the one that we won, uh, was, we've only been litigating for five years. So, uh, it was good to finally, uh, get another win under the belt. And, uh, needless to say, the client was very happy. So she is, uh, my client is definitely a, uh, a very happy camper. And, uh, so that was very exciting actually. Um, you know, and it's interesting because it's the same, it's the same cadre of doctors that the pension board is using because the state of New Jersey goes through this company called IMX and the IMX uses uh, doctors not only for pensions, but for workers' compensation cases too. And it's the same, it's the same, you know, set of uh, doctors. So, you know, after all these years, you know, the nonsense that the doctor is going to say. And what was interesting in the case that we won was I had their doctor in his, in his report have a complete misunderstanding of my client's job description. He felt that my job, uh, my client's job uh, was just sitting around all day long doing paperwork, uh, which if that were the case, she probably could have done her job. Um, however, my client uh, was a uh, individual who would actually have to go into the field and who would have to um, lift, push, pull, move files. There's tons of work that she was doing and she was driving, by the way, you know, six, seven, eight hours a day. So um, as a result, when I say to the doctor, we get him on cross-examination and I'm setting him up and I said, so doctor, you know, let me ask you a question. If you knew that this was her job, in fact, that's what she testified. In fact, that's what the actual job description says. So wouldn't that have an effect on your opinion? And the doctor's like, no, nope, no effect on my opinion. Still not disabled. And um, so, you know, and then you, you're going through trial and you point that out to the judge and the judge just ignores it. And then you go back to the pension board and they just ignored it. And so you go to the appellate division and it's fantastic to see that the appellate division calls them right out. Like, how could this not change the doctor's opinion? It was basically like saying, listen, and I said this last week. I said this last week because I was so frustrated last week, uh, as as you may recall. I, I, I do mind losing, okay? I mind losing. But, you know, there are trials and cases that, you know, you throw up into the air, you win, you lose. It is what it is. So 
The answer is I don't mind losing those cases when there is a legitimate possibility I could lose. But when you get somebody right in the crosshairs and you just bang and you know you got them, right? Everybody knows you got them. And yet there's no intellectual honesty about saying that you got them. And so, you know, it's just ignored. This is this is the last week I was ranting and raving about going to the pension board. Oh, and by the way, I have already filed both of those appeals that we had talked about because, you know, of their their ridiculous, ridiculous nonsense. So the answer is in these situations, and I'm going to keep doing it as long as my clients are willing to, um, you know, be on board, is that we're going to keep going up to the appellate division. And it's funny now, I have uh, been there a couple of times, well, a bunch of times, but now I'm starting to appear in front of the same judges, uh, uh, in in front of the same judges now, uh, more often. And so uh, there's a a familiarity with uh, enthusiasm 